next two guests are innovators in education using groundbreaking methods to connect to their students and give them happier lives. That's amazing. I love good teachers. So these two are sure to give you all the feels and warm your heart. From Wilmington, Delaware, meet Warner Elementary School principal Dr. Terrence Newton. And then from Fremont, California, welcome high school English teacher Aaron Castillo. So, Dr. Terrence, let's start with you. Like, you opened a free barbershop in your school. Explain. Well, my, of course, my, my school is an inner city school, Title I, 400 students who come from low-income communities. And um, I put the barbershop in place so that I can build relationships with the students. Mm -hmm. When I first got there at Warner Elementary, we were, our suspension was pretty much really high. Mm -hmm. And since I was able to build that, that uh, barbershop, and have that relationship because in a lot of African American communities, we look at barbershops as a conversation yeah. to build those relationships. Yeah. So, you know, was able to intertwine, you know, my third graders, my fourth graders, my fifth graders to kind of build that relationship and for me to grab that relationship because usually when the students are coming down to the principal office, they're in trouble. Yeah. They just come down to the barbershop, I'm cutting their hair, and we were able to see a lot of changes. And thanks to that, uh, to this year, we only have four suspensions now. Wow. Where did you get the idea of that though? Like, did you, have you always cut hair? Like, where did you get the idea? How did you, how did you make that connection that that would help? Well, probably about 15 years ago, um, when I was working in the school, one of the problematic kids, his hair, like, he was always in trouble, was always suspended, mm -hmm. and just noticed that he couldn't afford a haircut. You know, haircuts run $20, $25. Mm -hmm. And your kids who come when from... When you're a those, man. Absolutely, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Women, they take all our money. Right. <laughs> and, you know, our kids come from that low-income communities where their parents can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So this one time, I used my, my haircutting skills to build that relationship with him. Yeah. And it changed his whole attitude and philosophy with education. Because you cared enough, Absolutely. Too. Yeah. He started coming to school every day. His effort and his, his academics has increased. His behaviors decreased. And just that right there, just that spin of me cutting his hair, build a great relationship with him. That's so, so I kind of use that as a hook to do the same thing with all the boys that's in our, in our community. No, my mom was a teacher for years. She was so amazing at it, like teacher of the year. Like she's just so amazing. And um, I remember her saying once when I was younger, I don't know if she knows that I remember this, but you know, if she put, cause I used to complain being her daughter. I'm like, you spend so much time like doing work stuff. You're always with the you know kids at school. But she's like, you know, I find that if I put in time, then they put in time. Absolutely. If I care, they'll care. Like all of that, and that really struck a chord with me and made me really proud. I'm totally gonna cry, it's fine. Um, I cry over everything. Um, but you focus on mental health though, right, Erin? Yes, Yeah. I do. <laughs> so how do you do that? How do you attack that in high school with everybody being too proud to like own emotions? And how did you even, how did that come about? Yeah, so um, I myself was one of those kids too proud, I guess, to share. Um, when I was in high school, I w was there during a stabbing that occurred on my campus. I actually teach at the same school now. And um, I, I hit it. I was silently suffering. I didn't let people in and know that I was struggling. And I just felt like people didn't care to hear it. My teachers didn't care to hear it. And I didn't want to be one of those teachers that didn't care to hear what they were struggling with. If it was bothering them, if it is bothering them, then it's important and it's worth hearing it's about. Yeah. It's valid, 100%. So that's where the check-in chart came into place. So <laughs> what is the check-in chart? Explain to everybody. Um, so really, it's a piece of poster board that I scribbled on, mental health check-in, and it has some different categories um, going from like, I'm great to I'm struggling, I'm in a really dark place, I could use a check-in. Um, and so kids grab a post-it note, and they can do it any time that they're comfortable during the class when I announce that we're doing a check-in. Mm -hmm. And they write their name or some form of identification, a birthday, a nickname, whatever it is that they want to do on the back. And then they place it onto the chart. Um, it could be done electronically as well with Google Forms, all sorts of different ways. So that, that way they can do it anonymously mm -hmm. if they don't want to own it, but they're feeling it. Exactly. Yeah. And then it provides not just like an outlet for them to share, but I'm able to then see, okay, here's where these kids are and provide them with a visual of like, you're not alone. Did you know that there were other people in that same category yeah. as you, feeling the same way as you? Mm. And I usually choose days where I'm not feeling my best so that I can model it first and be like, y'all, I need a check-in today. Here's yeah. where I'm at. And I can put it up there and really model for them. And here's what I'm gonna do about that. I'm mm -hmm. gonna talk to a good friend or I'm gonna check in with one of our counselors here. Um, and it allows me to really hear them out and get them the support that they need, whether it's a psychologist on campus or a counselor. Um, 
Or sometimes just <laughs> simply them writing it down on paper and getting it out yes. of their body. Oh, it's totally. like, my mother did that with me. I was, I, I know this sounds crazy, <laughs> but I wasn't very talkative when I was little. I was, because we moved, <laughs> I know, I know, it's unbelievable. But no, I wasn't, and we moved around a bit, and you know, new school, so you're just, I became kind of an introvert, and my mother yeah. had me start writing. She was like, you're so bottled up, just I don't care what you write, just get something out, and that's how I became yes. a writer. Wow. Is because of that. So I think that's so important that you're doing that with them, just, just them expressing it, just yeah. getting it out on paper is yeah. so helpful. Like, Constance, did y'all have teachers? I had awesome teachers like this. Did you have awesome teachers like this? I had some good, some bad. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very honest answer. <laughs> yes. No, but did you have, I mean, I can, I can pinpoint, like, ones in my life, like Mr. Aller. Like, I have people that I can pinpoint, like, in my career of going to school that Absolutely. really helped me. Shout out to Jack Driscoll, who really just changed my life and the lives of so many people yeah. that I went to school with. And really just getting it out there and being able to communicate your feelings is so important. I think it saved my life as a teenager. Yeah. My gosh, that's awesome. So, Erin, how have parents and other teachers responded to this approach? Did they like it? Did they not? Is it catching on? Yeah, um, I was really honestly surprised. I just shared it as like, this worked for me. Maybe other people would like this. And I did not expect to see it in other countries, in other states. Wow. Yeah, it's just kind of taken off. And um, it's really just been awesome to see that people are paying attention to the mental health crisis that we have. An enormous one. Yes. And people don't talk about it enough. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So and it's not about politics, it's about mental health. Yes. That, that's all it's, yes. yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it's a real thing. Yeah, and just showing everyone has mental health. It, 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 we all have it. Yeah. And so just giving some focus to it, I don't know why this hasn't happened sooner, but and I'm happy that we're And check for everybody. There. It's such an inspiring message. Not just for in schools, but every job, like every vocation. It's really cool. So Erin, it's had a profound impact on your students though as well, right? Yes, it yeah. has. Um, I've been able to see them really being able to have conversations about feelings and mm. what causes them to have certain feelings and what helps improve their mood. So we've identified a lot of like, what does it mean when you say that you're in this category? Or what does it mean when you say you're in this category? And um, I now have friends that walk up together and they'll check in together and put their post-its up next to each other. That's cool. And they'll even put, I'm in struggling, and you'll see them walk back with their arm around each other like, I got you, we're gonna check in later. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. I love it! Dr. Tams, you say the barbershop has been life-changing for the kids, and it was it their relationships? Is that what you were getting at? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, we have 400 students that's in my elementary, and a lot of them don't get a chance to connect because they had third, fourth, and fifth, and they were really separated. Mm. So when they come to the barbershop, they're able to interact with each other and build relationships, you know, yeah. learn stuff about each other that they didn't know. We talk about football teams that they like. We even talk about some of the, the work that they're doing, some of the books they're reading in their classrooms, mm -hmm. because they're, able, they're sharing the books that they're reading in the bar shop as well. And they're making that connection. Wow. They're, they're building relationships That's as well. so cool, so cool. Well, Terrence doesn't know this, but the kids at his elementary school wanted to say something to him, so check this out. Hi, Principal Nguyen. Hi, Principal Nguyen. Hi, Principal Nguyen. Always take special time out of your day to make sure each kid gets attention and get their hair cut. You're always a kind person. I love it when you cut my hair because it's better than my regular barbershop. You always keep me looking fresh. When I look good, I feel good. You always help me stay motivated in school. You made me feel amazing. Thank you. Thank you for cutting my hair. I love it. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I love you. I know, I'm sorry. But Ooh. it's, look at that, look how happy they are. Look at what, I, my favorite though was like, you nailed it more than my barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> Was, but that's so touching, it's so moving. Look what you're doing. Like, uh, you're really impacting the lives of these young men, and uh, no, ma no matter what they do in life, they'll remember you for that. That's so cool. It's really touching, I'm trying not to cry because my goal is to change the world. And we have to start with our kids. And just building that relationship right there. Yeah. Really means a lot. Yeah. And, you know, just, just the things that Aaron is doing as well, is mm -hmm. making that connection with these kids, because we're losing our kids to death, incarceration, mm -hmm. we got to find something to build these relationships. Losing with kids. our kids to mental health problems. Mental yeah. health issues. Yeah. A lot of my kids deal with a lot of trauma, mm. a lot of trauma. So just for them coming to school and for them to say what they said, 
how they felt about me really meant a lot. Yeah. And I think that we forget as adults, like, how hard it was in those years. Like, junior high was hell for me. Like, you know, and high school can be hard. We forget how, as adults, you think you have no real problems. Like, you're fine. Like, as a parent, I can sometimes find myself saying that. But it isn't true. Like, it's hard navigating the social society that is school. Like, you know what I'm saying, in the setting of everything. It, it can be very difficult. So the fact that you're taking the extra time and thought and, and putting your heart into that is really cool. And I hope this is a domino effect for a bunch of teachers and principals. It's so cool. I will not stop talking until you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's right, and I can talk a lot. Seriously, not gonna stop. Yep, still here, not going anywhere. I see you. Don't walk away from this.